our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. On February 24, 2011, the European cargo spacecraft Johann Kepler carried out the latest state-of-the-art automated manoeuvres docking with the International Space Station. The automated transfer vehicle, known as ATV, performed to perfection and the tension of the witnesses quickly gave way to relieved applause as everybody hailed the new technological feat. There are basically several steps in the rendezvous where this human verification is done and then the vehicle goes fully autonomously. And this is different to all the other vehicles. If you, for example, compare an HTV or a space shuttle, human intervention is actually needed for the docking. A tous nos DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9. Launched on the 16th of February on board the rocket Ariane 5, flight operations have been continuously monitored from the ATV control centre in Toulouse. In order to operate an ATV we need uh, four control centres because we are using also the Columbus control centre in Oberpfaffenhofen as a kind of uh, ground segment um, switch point. Uh, the uh, Columbus Control Center is connected to the MCCH in Houston uh, and to the uh, Moscow Control Center in uh, yeah, Moscow. The cargo spacecraft approaches the International Space Station at an altitude of 350 kilometers, traveling 28,000 kilometers per hour. It then docks, controlled only by its optical sensors and flight calculators, remaining simply to unload supplies. After serving the storage area for some months, the ATV is loaded with the station's waste and is programmed to disintegrate on re-entry into the atmosphere. The technology uh, is such that we are not yet able to uh, fully recover such a vehicle, and that would be certainly uh, one of the next steps which uh, is also needed uh, from a research point of view because we, we are still, let's say, lacking some download capability in the program. Some of the research items uh, have to be downloaded to Earth. Uh, and right now, uh, after the shuttle retirement, there will be some shortfall in this download capability. Yet a project was launched. The ARV, or Advanced Reentry Vehicle, consisted of a service module based on the current ATV to resupply the International Space Station, and with a module to re-enter the atmosphere which would be retrievable intact along with its contents. The ARV project has been officially started uh, after the Ministerial Conference in 2008. Uh, we have run uh, a Phase A and a Phase B1. Um, then we had the financial crisis, which we have to face. Uh, and during the last uh, council meeting, uh, it has been uh, agreed not to develop, a, not to go for a phase CD. So we will finish uh, the program for the time being with a so-called system requirement review. Um, obviously, we will keep all the data, and if one day uh, member states decide differently, uh, we could wake up uh, this uh, know-how, um, but for the time being it is not an ongoing project anymore. In Bremen, northern Germany, the animals on this statue protect the town's old musicians and bring good luck to people. This is also the place where the space truck is being constructed. In Astrium's facilities, the project manager and his team live and breathe the ATV. What we can see here is a model of ATV, and ATV is the cargo carrier, the European cargo carrier to the ISS. It's uh, 10 meters high, it's four and a half meters in diameter, it's roughly 20 tons uh, weight and carrying seven tons of cargo. After the first ATV named Jules Verne was launched in 2008, the second, Johann Kepler, followed in 2011. The third copy is now at an advanced stage of construction. 
called Eduardo Amaldi in honour of one of the most brilliant Italian physicists of the last century, the ATV-3 will be launched in 2013 to once again resupply the ISS while performing other missions. It's used for the reboost of the station, which means the station in total or as a complete system is brought to a higher altitude by using the main thrusters of ATV. And also from time to time, ATV is used for either collision avoidance maneuvers to avoid collisions with debris. And also from time to time, it is used to control the attitude of the station. To understand the complexity of the ATV machine, you only have to look at the heart of it under construction. More than automatic, its guidance systems touch upon a form of artificial intelligence. There is a lot of intelligence in the ATV. If you just take the, uh, the main software, there are one million lines of codes in the ATV software. Um, the computer is a failure tolerant uh, computer which actually consists of uh, three DPUs which are data processing units which are controlling themselves and they are even voting against each other in case of one of those DPUs would fail. But what is artificial intelligence? At the University of Southampton in England, Professor Sandor Veres continued his research on computer systems of the future. For him, the automatic docking of the ATV with the International Space Station already represents a major step forward. I see this as a tremendous achievement of uh, an automated process and autonomous process, in fact. Uh, my understanding is that they were only monitoring, actually, what was going on. And uh, it was a fairly complex system with lots of states and uh, some operational logic in it which was ready to respond for some unexpected events as well. So I see the roots of intelligence in that system already. With his team, the professor has designed two small robots, A and B, which replicate the actions of satellites flying information. A ceiling has been designed schematically and represents the stars. The machines know their position through a system of cameras and can communicate and make decisions autonomously. They have a, a set of rules to, to obey with respect to their operation in the environment and at any stage they uh, check the consistency of that and they wouldn't do uh, any logical de decision which, which goes against that. Their interaction is done through the onboard computers, a key component in their programming. Professor Varese's team have invented the SysBrain, written with the so-called S-English, a new form of programming language where robots not only know how to do things, but also know why they're doing them. It is a program, but it, and the rather set of programs, which is very special. It has logic programming in it, it has functional programming, it has declarative programming in it. On the face of it, it's presented like a book, you know and special chapters about reasoning, special chapters about how do I do my sensing, how do I do my uh, skills execution in a mission, and it's written down purely in terms of English sentences, not the way Pascal or Python or, or all these languages are written, but in terms of, of natural language. And the importance of that is that you have a, a sharing of knowledge with the machine, sort of, that, that is the sense of this. An art of programming in S English would include that you program foresight. <laughs> so, in, in fact, you would define in the S English document a monitoring of certain events in the environment, and those will be picked up by the reasoning engine that, uh, okay, if I do this, that will happen in the future. So my reasoning will derive that I can't do this. I have to do something else, you know, because of the prediction of future shows I'm doing something wrong. A and B are robots of the future, but let's get back to reality and to our intelligent craft. can be programmed to perform some quite surprising tasks. The looping of the International Space Station, for example.
just recently there was the request uh, to put ISS, let's say, upside down and this were, never has been planned uh, to do so before and uh, the request came and ADV were able uh, to do that. So we are very excited about also the flexibility of our system and that we can even fulfill requests which were not on the table before. The European Supply Craft Programme will continue until 2017, by which point five ATV spacecrafts will have been built. ATV is definitely the most complex vehicle ever built by the agency, and in that sense you can say it's, pre it's a precursor. Um, there are a lot of techn technologies uh, which have been developed for ATV, which are, let's say, Europe's first developments. And in that sense, those technologies can obviously be used also for future missions. So what does the future hold? It's thought that automated docking will be used for distant exploration missions and probes will continue to become more automated over time. But is there a risk of us losing control of these so-called smart machines? What they can learn is their skills, physical skills and problem-solving skills, but they are not learning new uh, decision-making for achieving arbitrary goals. So they are not learning new goals. The goals are given by human beings to these, to these machines. So it's sort of, they are becoming servants of the man rather than masters. The International Space Station ends in 2020 and the ATV programs will last till 2017. All indicators suggest a collaboration between ISS partners could provide a new cargo spacecraft in the future.